Father, Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, we truly give you praise tonight. We give you praise for who you are, and God, we give you praise for coming to this earth to show us who you are and what it means to be a person created in your image. Father, as we look at this scripture tonight, I just ask that you speak to each one of our hearts. Holy Spirit, we invite you here to speak to each one of our hearts. Remind us of the depth of your love. Remind us of the depth of your transforming work. Jesus, I pray that as I share these words that you put on my heart tonight, that it wouldn't be me, but it would be you who speaks to each and every one of us. So Jesus, Holy Spirit, I just ask that you give us ears to hear. Open our hearts to hear what you have to say to us this evening. And I pray all of this in your holy, in your powerful, in your loving name. Amen. So as we read tonight uh, from the Gospel of Luke, and as we, we heard about what Luke recorded uh, with the shepherds encountering the angels and hearing about this wonderful, world-changing news, I want us to, to think about what it would be like to be in the shoes of those shepherds, or rather I should say to be in the sandals of those shepherds out there in the field. You know, it was night, it was probably pretty dark, we don't know, maybe it was cloudy, if it was cloudy it would have been very dark, maybe it wasn't, and there were stars shining, the moon was, the moon was bright, but you can imagine these shepherds after working all day, they were probably tired, you know, they were out in the country, in the field, you can probably imagine in your mind the sheep that were there in the field with them. There, there might have been just the, the continuous baa, right, of the sheep all around them. These shepherds in their mind said, you know, this was just another normal night for them. We come here tonight in anticipation of Christmas. That wasn't in the shepherd's mindset. This was just another normal night for them to work. They weren't anticipating this news. Maybe in the back of their mind, they were thinking about how do I protect these sheep from the predators that may be out there, from the wolves or, or the jackals or the lions that may have been roaming around the countryside. And then suddenly in the darkness, as they're, they're doing their normal thing that evening, suddenly in the darkness, this, this majestic, this otherworldly, this kind of supernatural angel appears, right? An angel, a messenger of God, a messenger of the Holy One of Israel. And in that darkness, there's this bright, and there is this blinding, and there is this incredible light. And it was just so much so that they probably could not even look at this messenger, this angel of God. The scripture talks about that we read this evening that the glory of the Lord was shining around them. When we think about Exodus and, and Moses on Mount Sinai, encountering the glory of the Lord, Moses can't even look. Moses has to turn his back. As you put yourself in the sandals of these shepherds out there in that dark night and encountering this otherworldly messenger of God, you can imagine what the emotions might have been, what their thoughts might have been, what their feelings might have been at this event. Maybe they were just overcome with awe. Maybe it was a, a paralyzing fear. Maybe it was anxiety for the unknown of what this messenger might represent. There was certainly surprise. There was certainly shock. I had to ask myself, were the sheep silent in awe of this incredible angel of God? Or were they going wild? What is going on here? Where did the boss just increase tenfold? Something tells me in the back of my mind that even the sheep themselves were in awe, maybe even in fear of this messenger, of this angel of God. You know, when we think about angels, a lot of times... In our, in our minds, we think about, you know, a painting that we may have seen of a little baby floating 
with wings, right? And they look cute and innocent. But when you actually read scripture, it's, it's, it's pretty much the opposite. When we look at the Old Testament, the prophet Ezekiel encountered angels, and he described these angels as the glory of the Lord. And this is how he describes these angelic beings. They generally have a human form, they have hands, they have feet, but then they, this, this being that he, the prophet Ezekiel encountered, it had four faces. It didn't have one face, not two, not three. It had four faces. It had four wings. It had feet that were shining like, like bronze. And these four faces were a human face, it was an ox face, it was a lion face, and it was an eagle face. So you can imagine the awe that the prophet Ezekiel had. When Isaiah encounters God, he encounters seraphs that have six wings. When John encounters God in receiving his revelation, and he describes these angelic creatures, they are full of eyes. Their entire bodies are covered with eyes. Each of these creatures have six wings. One creature is a lion, one creature is an ox, one is a human, one is an eagle. They're covered in eyes and they have six wings. He encounters another angel later on in, in his revelation and it has legs like fire. It has a head that is shining as bright as the sun and there are clouds enveloping this messenger of God. There is a rainbow above this messenger's head and when he spoke, it wasn't like me speaking or you speaking. If you've ever heard a lion roaring, that's how John describes this messenger of God speaking with a lion's roar. So again, put yourself back in the sandals of those shepherds out there that night, minding their own business. And then suddenly, this messenger of God appears. You can imagine Maybe the terror, the fear, the anxiety, the dread, the worry. And those would all be normal reactions to a messenger of God. You know, sometimes I think to myself, if an angel, if a messenger of God ever appeared to me, and I didn't have the same kind of reaction as someone did in Scripture, that being terrified, or being overwhelmed with awe or fear, I'd really have to wonder about that supernatural being, about that angel. I'd have to wonder where it came from, whom it came on behalf of. We would have to have a conversation, a discerning conversation. But besides that, when these angels came to these shepherds, after the shepherds may have overcome their initial kind of shock, their initial terror of what was going on, the shepherds might have been thinking something along the lines of, well, what is it that these angels, that these messengers of God, that these incredible beings have to say to us? Again, they don't particularly know that something is supposed to happen that night. They're just doing their work. They may be asking themselves, if this host of heavenly messengers from God is here, does this mean that this is uh, bad news? Does this mean that, that God has finally brought judgments upon us and for some reason we shepherds, random shepherds out in, the, out in the field are the first ones to hear about it? Now in their Jewish mindset, they may have had an idea that Israel has not obeyed the law. They may have caught a teaching from a Pharisee roaming around the countryside teaching different people that Israel just hasn't fulfilled what God has called them to do. Despite all their attempts after their return from exile and to, to rebuild Jerusalem and to rebuild the temple and to keep God's law. You now these shepherds out there in the field, they may have been thinking to themselves, uh, I mean, this is great and all, but shouldn't, shouldn't you guys be telling the people in charge of the temple? You know, why are you telling us? But this is what the first thing that this 
incredible angel, this incredible messenger of God says, despite the very awe-inspiring nature of who this nature of who this angel is, the angel says, Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. And then we have this, besides this first angel that appears, besides this first messenger, then we have a multitude of other angels appearing next to it, alongside of this angel. And they are all singing in praise of this divine king. They're singing in praise of the second person of the Trinity. They're singing in praise of the one who was, the one who is, and the one who always will be the very word of God. They are singing in praise of Jesus Christ, even as an infant, even as a possibly crying infant. I know we we sung away in a manger and we said, no crying he makes, but I, I think Jesus might have been crying that night. And this host of angels were there singing praise to this crying human infant. As you can imagine, this was an awe-inspiring and a a life-changing experience for these shepherds. If if you were there, it would have been the same for you. Life-changing. Now, there, there seems to be a lot of fear that goes around these days. We have to use a lot of wisdom. We have to search for truth in everything. Jesus said in in the Gospel of Matthew, he said that we have to be wise as serpents, wise as serpents and innocent as doves. We think about all the things that are going on in our world, And maybe it's not too much different than what was going on in the first century Jewish world. We think about today the the politics, the geopolitical unrest, Russia, China, the Middle East, whatever it may be. We think about COVID that we've been dealing with. We think about Delta variant and the Omicron variant. We think about the issues with inflation and, and the cost of oil and the energy industry. We think about the social unrest that we've experienced. We think about divides that we may see in terms of of race or or wealth or education. We think about the things that we deal with in our very own lives. Sickness, finances, work, Relationships with our family and our friends. Maybe we have to deal with anxiety and worry. And certainly, the news or the media doesn't help anything. If we listen to Fox News or CNN or MSNBC all day long, or or all we do all day long is just scroll through Twitter and Facebook all day, it can be very easy to think. But every little thing in the world is going to cause the entire world to end and everyone hates each other and that there's this culture of outrage and fear and anger just all the time. But wrapped up in this angel's call to the shepherds, when the angel says, do not fear, yes, it it is a direct command to not be scared of them, but also with the news of a savior that these shepherds didn't have to have a reason to fear for the brokenness, the wiliness, the sinfulness, the manipulation, the darkness, the unease that is in the world. And it's the same call to us when the angel says, when the messenger says, do not fear that we don't have to be afraid of these things that are going on in the world. That is because the Savior who was born that night, Jesus Christ, is the Savior who overcomes. 
He is the Savior who was prophesied about in Isaiah chapter 9 that we also read scripture from. He is the one who brings healing from the brokenness that is around us. Jesus Christ is the one who restores our hearts. And Jesus Christ is the one who brings true peace. And Jesus Christ is the one who brings true justice. And Jesus Christ is the one who brings true righteousness. That in Jesus Christ, when he was born that day of the Virgin Mary, Jesus truly was Emmanuel, God with us. God has finally come to be with us. And this is the reason that we have to praise God and to rejoice. It is the reason that the shepherds witnessed the angels themselves singing in praise of this baby. Over the last several weeks, as we talked about earlier, we've looked at the themes of peace and hope and joy and love. In Jesus Christ, each of these overcome the weights and the burden that we experience in the world. In Jesus Christ, that peace and that hope and that joy and love is, is lasting. It is resilient. It is eternal. That peace and that love and that hope and joy in Jesus Christ, it is not based in an ever-changing roller coaster of ups and downs that we see in the world. But it is based in the kingdom of God himself. It is based in his salvation, in his continuing sanctification. It is based in his renewal and his healing and his redemption that he brings for the world and for all of humanity. This is the new creation that Jesus brings and it starts with his birth. And these are the values of his heavenly kingdom impacting our world. And it started that night when Jesus was born. The amazing thing is, is that God in Jesus Christ is calling us to be a part of that new life. God in Jesus Christ, even in the infant, Jesus Christ is calling us to be a part of that new creation work so that we can reflect Jesus and his heavenly kingdom into a broken world that is overcome by all of these things that we experience every day, anxiety and worry and fear and, and politics and geopolitics and uncivil discourse and even things that are influenced in our world by the demonic and the darkness that we see. Whatever our position is in life, even if we identify with the shepherds, and we're saying, well, why are you telling us? We're just shepherds. It's because with Jesus Christ, everyone has a part in this kingdom. Everyone has a role in it. This is a representation of God's love and God's call for all people. That this is good news that applies to everyone. It doesn't matter what our position is or our work is or our status in life is or how much power or capability or influence or, or whatever it is that we think we have or we don't have. Jesus Christ is bringing this news for each one of us. Jesus Christ has come to bring life for everyone, even the shepherd that is out there in the field, tending smelly and noisy sheep in the middle of the night. This birth of Jesus is the good news to say that our hope is not in worldly governments gaining victory over one another. Our hope is not in a political party gaining victory over another political party. Our hope is not in whatever the massive media corporations tell us. Our hope is not in whatever the massive technological corporations allow us to see or not see. But our hope is in our peace and our joy and our love is in Jesus Christ alone. We do not have to fear. Good news has come. These angelic beings, as awe-inspiring and as potentially terrifying as they may sound, you know, it's just like a huge grizzly bear or a lion by their very nature are scary beings. But these messengers of God bring good news. 
that Jesus Christ, the King whose birth we celebrate tonight, He is the Savior who overcomes. He is the long-expected King who will bring salvation into a broken world. And He has arrived. Good news of great joy for all people. He is the one who, even as a crying, helpless infant in a manger, surrounded by Mary and Joseph and probably some other barn animals, he is the one who brings healing and redemption and salvation and ongoing renewal to a world in need. That first century Jewish world needed to hear that news. But history hasn't changed. We need to hear that news also. We very much need to hear the news of a Savior born to bring true salvation to our world. Salvation that overcomes brokenness and sinfulness that we see around us, or that we experience in our own lives, or that we see in the world. 